If you live in England or are planning a trip to England, I highly recommend you visit the Cotswolds. It is my favorite place on the planet, and everyone I've brought to this area has fallen in love with it too. Let's talk about how to plan your trip to the Cotswolds. I'm excited to discuss this topic since the Cotswolds is my happy place. If you're not familiar with it and what the area actually is, please watch my introduction to the Cotswolds video first for some background. I also have a whole playlist of videos explaining different towns and villages in the Cotswolds that you can watch as you prepare for your travels. So let's review some things you need to decide up front when you are planning your visit. I will be including loads of details and links in the description so that you can reference all the information you need as you develop your personalized plans. First question, how long do you have to spend within the Cotswolds AONB? If you are in London and only have a weekend, sure, come spend two days in the Cotswolds and make the most of it. But ideally, it would be great to spend at least three to five days. And if you can manage to spend a week or more, there are even more amazing things you can do. It just really depends on your schedule. The next important thing to decide is how will you get around? The mode of transportation will determine some decisions on where you stay and which places make sense for you to include in your itinerary. My advice on transportation is to drive if you can, since it is the easiest way to access any tiny village you might want to see. But if traveling by car is not an option, train travel is great, especially if you are coming from London. And buses are another feasible option, as they can get you to many places in the area with careful planning and some flexibility. Finally, hiking or walking is a delightful way to explore the Cotswolds, particularly to get in between villages once you are in the Cotswolds area. In fact, if you have a week or more and want to hike the Cotswold Trail, I would highly encourage you to do so. There are some fabulous places to see along the Cotswold Way, and it's always nice to enjoy the beautiful countryside on foot. If you are hiking the trail, try stopping in places with great pubs and guest houses like Chipping Campton, Stanton, Painswick, and Bath, which are conveniently located right on the trail. The next decision after choosing your mode of transport is deciding where you will stay the night while you are in the Cotswolds. There are loads of accommodation options, from posh hotels to small guest houses to Airbnbs. But the best idea is to coordinate a place that is convenient given your selected means of transportation. In other words, plan how you're going to get to the Cotswolds and then make that location your base whilst you take trips out each day from there. If you are getting to the Cotswolds by train, the easiest place to stash your suitcase and launch your tour would be in a place with regular rail service, like Morton and Marsh, Kemble, and locations on the edges of the Cotswolds, like Bath. Stroud, Gloucester, or Cheltenham. Links in the description for National Rail, Great Western Railway, and Train Line will help you plan your train travel. If you are traveling by bus, consider choosing overnight accommodation in one of the towns with main bus stations like Gloucester, Stroud, or Cheltenham. Sirencester is also a great town to consider since it's a straight shot on a National Express bus from Heathrow. The local bus services can then get you to many other towns throughout the area. I've provided links in the description to both the National Express website as well as links to all the local bus companies that run between Cotswold towns. If you are driving your car, then you have the ability to reach any Cotswold town or village you want to see without being limited by a set route or timetable. With this flexibility, I recommend you choose some more popular places you want to visit either early in the morning like seeing lovely Borton on the water at 8 a.m. before the tourists invade, or late in the evening, like dinner at a fabulous pub where you might enjoy a few beverages, and then plan your overnight stays to coordinate with those locations. Before listing what towns or villages you'll visit, I advise people to think about what most interests them and choose their stops based on those priorities. For example, if you love gardens, Watch my Best Gardens in the Cotswolds video and plan to visit Chipping Campton or Morton and Marsh on your route. And if you are a flower lover, there are also some lovely flower fields in the area. I shared my visit to the Broadway Lavender Fields in this Flower Fields video. If you're an animal lover, why not visit one of the wonderful animal experiences in the area that I mention in my video on that topic? And incorporate Burford, Guiding Power, 
or Morton and Marsh in your Cotswolds itinerary. If you love architecture, you are spoilt for choice in the Cotswolds. There are grand manor houses, many options ranging from the opulent Blenheim Palace in Woodstock to the quirky Snows Hill Manor in Snows Hill to the unusually beautiful Season Coat House. And of course, there are the churches. Every town and village has at least one beautiful old church, but there are some really stunning churches, known as wool churches because of the wool money that funded their construction, with the most elaborate architecture and decor. A couple of our favorites are in Burford and Chipping Campton. Though the small ancient church with no electricity across from Hales Abbey also has a special place in my heart. And we have to mention the rows of Cotswold stone homes. This is what the Cotswolds are known for. This noteworthy site you can see throughout the area is in fact what links the whole area together with the centuries-old beautiful honey-colored stone. Of course, the most famous row of Cotswold cottages is in Bybury, and it is well worth a visit, especially if you can either go very late or very early in the day. But we also adore the rows of stunning buildings in Burford, Chipping Camden, and Painswick. Then there's Regency architecture. If you love the Regency era and you want to stay in a place that has gorgeous examples of Regency style, you can visit Bath and Cheltenham. Both of them are not in the Cotswolds, but they are on the edge and are great places to stay and explore the area. If you love palaces and castles, I strongly encourage you to visit Winchcombe and nearby Sudley Castle, or consider a stop at Blenheim Palace on your way into the Cotswolds. If you love ancient history, consider visiting a couple prehistoric sites that I enjoy even more than Stonehenge, namely Bella Snap or the Rollwright Stones. I have videos that show you around each of these really unique and fascinating Neolithic locations. When charting your travel route through the Cotswolds and listing the towns and villages you plan to see, my most important advice in itinerary planning is to include both super famous destinations as well as some small, quieter, less touristy stops. I think this is the mistake that most visitors from outside the country make when visiting the Cotswolds. If you only visit Borton on the Water, Stowe on the Wold, Bybury, and Castle Coombe, you will never experience the breathtakingly peaceful moments you can have in places like Hales, Stanton, Miserden, or Naunton. In the description, I'll list our favorite Cotswold places in groups that will help you with ideas for places you might like to see during your visit. The bigger bustling places, small quiet places, and sites and attractions that incorporate your interests. Once you have planned your route, and your list of attractions you will include along the way, don't forget food. Since food is my favorite part of all travel experiences, I hope you'll note my food recommendations throughout my Cotswolds video playlist, as well as check out my best pubs in the Cotswolds video for some top tier grub. I also adore afternoon tea, and there are many lovely places to enjoy that treat in the Cotswolds. A couple of our favorites are Lords of the Manor in Upper Slaughter and Buckland Manor in Buckland. Having a cream tea or afternoon tea in one of these beautiful places allows you to experience the gorgeous manor without the high cost of an evening meal or an overnight stay. And finally, after you've planned out all the details, be open to unexpected surprises. Allow time for wandering, exploring, and following cool ideas that spring up unexpectedly. That's what I did when I ended up having a blast in Snowsill and Dungesborn Abbots on my two Cotswold adventures I described in the Two Best Things I Did in England video. Not to sound sappy, but there are so many hidden delights just waiting for you to discover them. I'm not a travel agent nor a professional travel planner, but I am someone who lives on the edge of the Cotswolds in Cheltenham and loves spending time there. After 30 years of visiting the Cotswolds, we finally bought our own flat to continue to get to know the area and share it with our friends and family. Please leave a comment and let me know what questions you have about visiting the Cotswolds. And if you've been in the past, let me know what you enjoyed most about your trip to the Cotswolds. 
Click here to watch my full Cotswolds playlist and see the description below for individual videos and lots more information. Happy travels! Thanks for watching and do something good in the world today.